Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is how to calculate payoffs in mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. I cover this topic in Game Theory 101, the complete textbook, lesson 1.6 in fact. Check the video description for more information about that. So remember that in the last video we were looking at battle of the sexes. We saw that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria, one where both players go to the ballet and another where both players go to the fight. Now we also saw that there was a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where the man goes to the ballet with probability one third and goes to the fight with probability two thirds, whereas the woman, player two, goes to the ballet with probability two thirds and the fight with probability one third. Now when we're interested in comparing payoffs, when we're talking about pure strategy and Nash equilibria, it's really easy to see what those payoffs are because we have a payoff matrix and you just point and look. So for example, if we're interested in knowing the exact payoffs for the players, if they play the ballet, ballet, pure strategy, Nash equilibrium, we just look here and we see that player one earns one and player two earns two. That's really obvious and really easy and really straightforward. It's a little bit less obvious and a little bit less straightforward when we're talking about the payoffs in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, but it's still important to know what that payoff is so we can compare it to these pure strategy Nash equilibria as well as perhaps the other outcomes that aren't equilibria. So the way we're going to do that, the way we're going to calculate payoffs is actually not too bad. It's just a simple algorithm. It requires a few calculations, but once you get at the hang of it, it really isn't that hard. So the three steps are like this. First, you need to find the probability of each outcome occurring in equilibrium. Then you need to, for each outcome, multiply that probability by a particular player's payoff. And then lastly, you just sum all those numbers together, and that's the payoff of that player in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So let's see this in action with Battle of the Sexes, starting with finding the probability of each outcome occurring. Now, we've already found the strategies for the players in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So we know that player one is mixing like this and player two is mixing like this. It's helpful when you're doing this to go ahead and actually write those probabilities next to the player's strategies when you're working this out on a piece of paper for yourself. And then all you do once you've done that is you multiply across. So for example, if we're interested in knowing what the probability that both players show up at the ballet is, then all you do is you take this one third over here from player one that's the probability that player one goes to the ballet. And then player two's mixed strategy is independent of player one's mixed strategy. So we just get to mal uh, multiply this probability one third for player one by this probability two thirds for player two. And if you do that, you get two ninths. And you just do that for each of these other outcomes. So for this outcome over here, player one goes to the ballet with probability one third, player two goes to the fight with probability one third. That means you reach this outcome with probability one ninth. For this outcome, player one chooses fight with probability two thirds, and player two chooses ballet with probability two thirds. So you get to this outcome with probability four ninths. And then lastly, you get to this outcome where both players go to the fight with probability two ninths. That's two thirds times one third. Now, it's always a good thing to double check to make sure you did this right. These numbers all have to sum up to one because something must happen. And so probabilities, by definition, need to sum to 1. If this sums to something greater than 1 or something less than 1, then you've done that wrong and you need to redo it. But this, you'll see, 2 ninths plus 1 ninth is 3 ninths, plus 4 ninths is 7 ninths, plus 2 ninths is 9 ninths. That sums to 1, so we're good, which means we can advance to the next step. So the next step is for each outcome to multiply that probability by a particular player's payoff. And so you see that I've erased player two's payoffs. We're looking at player one's payoffs, which is just one times two ninths, zero times one ninth, zero times four ninths, and uh, two times two ninths. And then lastly, oops, wrong slide. There we go. Lastly, we just sum all of those numbers together and we are done. So if you do that, you get two ninths plus zero plus zero plus four ninths is equal to six ninths, and that reduces to two thirds. So player one in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium earns two thirds of a point. Now, once we've done that for player one, it's easier to do it for player two because we just have to take care of the last two steps. We already know the probabilities. Those don't change from player to player, so we just got to do this now for player two where player two is getting two times two ninths, zero times one ninth, zero times four ninths, and one times two ninths. You add all those together, you get six ninths as well for player two. So player two is also earning two thirds in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, just to conclude here, again, it's always a good exercise to compare the payoffs of a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium 
to the payoffs in a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. And what's interesting here is that remember, both players earn two thirds in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. But note that's actually worse for the players than selecting the pure strategy Nash equilibrium that's less favorable to a particular player. In other words, if we think of this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium as sort of the conflictual outcome where the players can't agree on anything, then this is actually worse for player one than just conceding the issue to player two. Remember, player one really prefers being at the fight to being at the ballet with player two. But if player one were going into this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, he would only make six ninths or two thirds of a point. In contrast, he could just be like, hey, player two, let's just meet at the ballet. I give up. You win. We're going to meet at the ballet tonight. That's actually better for him than winding up in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And it's also better for player two, because remember, she earns two thirds as well. So of course, she's more satisfied by selecting this pure strategy Nash equilibrium than being stuck in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And of course, there's a similar story down here with the fight fight outcome. So again, if you ever have a game that has both pure strategy Nash equilibrium and mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, it's always helpful to go ahead and calculate the payoffs for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and then compare them to the payoffs for the pure strategy Nash equilibria. And that is all for this video. In the next video, uh, we have gotten pretty darn comfortable with the concept of mixed strategies. And so now we're going to apply mixed strategies to strict dominance, which is, which is what we actually started with when we were talking about the prisoner's dilemma and iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. So it's finally time to mesh some stuff together. Join me in the next video when we go ahead and do that. Take care.